Elections are one of the most important, if not the most important, part of any democracy. They are supposed to be a testing of ideas and of personalities, a debate about the future, a testing of the mettle of your potential leaders, both locally and nationally. And if I hark back to my first election in uh, 2005 for the seat of Napier, that was, that was certainly, yeah, once going back a few years, certainly a testing of, a test of personalities. If I look at the candidates there and uh, up against... Um, well, your opposition uh, <laughs> no, up against Russell uh, Fairbrother, a debater of some merit. Uh, certainly different personalities in that test. <laughs> I couldn't put my... Uh, uh, Anyway, it was, a, it was a testing of personalities, is the point I want to make, and a testing of ideals, and fortunately at that particular time, I was fortunate enough to win the seat. In any democracy, Mr Speaker, an election needs to be a fair fight. The reality is somewhat different, as many new candidates entering a political race quickly find out. There is no doubt, Mr Speaker, that a sitting MP has a competitive advantage. Three years of incumbency, Three years of school visits, three years of constituency clinics, three years of galas, school prize givings and assemblies, three years of being in the newspaper, three years to build an awareness and a positive brand with their constituency. There is no doubt that the political tide comes and goes. However, a good constituency MP, a good constituency MP, MP have the advantage of incumbency, uh, which an opposition candidate must battle from day one. You know, it's tough, uh, but that's the reality. Mr Speaker, no law is going to change that. No law is going to change that, and this particular bill is not going to change that either. This competitive advantage of incumbency has been somewhat reduced with MMP. In many instances, List MPs are able to establish a pseudo-constituency MP office and make out like they are the local MP. Well, this this allows effectively the taxpayer to fund a three-year campaign against the incumbent MP. I'm not sure that the wider electorate is particularly happy about that, but hey, that's the way it is, and once again, it isn't going to change under this legislation. These, anomal these anomalies aside, elections need to be regulated to be as fair as possible. It will be the job of this select committee, Mr Speaker, of which I am a member, to ensure that the final legislation is an equitable playing field. Mr Speaker, throughout time immemorial, human beings have sought ways to obtain competitive advantage within the rules that are in place. It's just part of the human spirit trying to push the boundaries. That Kiwi spirit, you know, if you think about the America's Cup campaign and the rules that were in place there, lawyers, the money that was spent to bend those rules to get around them was, in, was incredible. Many lawyers and accountants spend their entire professional lives trying to find ways around existing laws to gain advantage for their clients. And election law, Mr Speaker, dare I say, is no different. And I'm sure that immediately this law is passed that there will be political boffins looking for ways to improve their lot, to improve their competitive advantage, to get around the rules. It is therefore very important that the committee obligate themselves to challenge this legislation to ensure that it is as robust as possible. Most of us on the committee have served a couple of elections, Mr Hughes being one of those, those uh, people. And, I'd, and then I think that, that experience will be important as we steer the, the bill through the committee stage. Mr Speaker, let me give you an example of a situation that currently pushes the boundaries. And I'll be asking the committee to have a close look at the current position where some MPs own their own offices through a trust. They are obligated to provide a market valuation for the rent. No problems here. All do, and most pay that valuation. Some, however, do not charge the full cost of the rent to parliamentary service. The MP says, look, I'm saving the taxpayer money, but then goes on to spend his or her entire taxpayer budget. The taxpayer, Mr Speaker, saves not one cent. What they have effectively done, however, is gift themselves a pecuniary interest from their trust or company 
allowing them a much better office location while still being able to spend their full out-of-office budget on advertising and other things to help lift their profile. There's not much problem with this outside the election period, although I still believe this gift should be declare, declared in an MP's document of pecuniary interest. The real issue, which we need to turn our thoughts to, Mr Speaker, comes during the election period. And here's the question. If an MP has a high-profile corner office, effectively a billboard, which parliamentary service is not paying the full cost of, should the benefit of that additional spend be included as part of an MP's electioneering costs Excellent. for the regulated period? Excellent point. My argument would be that to not include that cost would to create an unfair advantage. Ah. And I refer you to advertising expenses part three of the bill, where it says part two, the reasonable market value of any material used or applied towards the advertisement that is provided free or charge of charge or below reasonable market value. So what this does, Mr Speaker, is to bring this into question and something that we will have to consider and make sure that uh, either it has been declared within the uh, election expenditure or within the document of uh, pecuniary interest. In the extreme situation, an MP could provide their high profile office at no cost to parliamentary service and spend, then spend their entire parliamentary budget on self promotion in the lead up to the regulated period. If the office is not paid for par by parliamentary service, then what is it? I suggest it's a campaign office. I'm sure, Mr. Speaker, that there are other examples of situations like this. And I'm sure the committee will be able to turn their minds to these examples and to provide what I believe should be a fair, transparent and equitable tra um, playing field going into the next election. Mr Speaker, I look forward to sitting on that committee and dealing with the issues that rise throughout the period of submissions. I encourage New Zealanders um, to submit to that committee to make their opinions heard so that we can listen to them and make sure that we deliver the very best legislation possible that is agreed as much as possible across the House so that we have a robust piece, a robust piece of legislation going forward. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker.